What's going to be Hotspur News? I'm joined by Josh. Same with the player range for our 4-1 win against Crystal Palace. Just going to get straight into it. Signed with Hugo Lloris. He had nothing to do, realistically, uh, yeah. apart from the goal. We had no chance. So, what would you give Lloris? It was going to go in if it hit the target anyway. Yeah, so what would you give Lloris out of 10? I mean, my opinion, he had nothing to do whatsoever, apart from the goal, which he had no chance. I guess he can Great see the Benteco. goal. And I've got to be kind of fair. He didn't have a chance, so I'll give him a 6. Yeah, I think, yeah, 6 out of 10. I would have given him a 5 out of 10. I think. I think that's really quite harsh, harsh, though, because, like, yeah, well, five well, is a my, bad score for me, so it's like. Well, in, now, in my opinion, like, to me, it's like a 5 is a realistic score for a goalkeeper who literally did nothing all game, mm -hmm. realistic. Because cause five's like in the middle, isn't it? Like, 5 is a rating of a player who, like, who just did, yeah. and who literally had even nothing to do. We had an average game. Yeah. So, uh, apart from the goal, I mean, I mean, I mean, you said six, I said five. But, anyways, moving on to uh, the defense, sign off with Sergio Reglon. I thought he had a very good game last night. Um, mm -hmm. Literally, he won so many slide tackles. Like, I've never seen a player slide on the pitch more than Reglon last night. Um, I see that scissor kick as well. Yeah, he tries to do a scissor kick and he got it horribly wrong. But, but anyways, I thought defensively he was fantastic. Literally, a steam train for the full 90 minutes, so what would you give Regulon? Give Regulon an 8. Yeah, an 8 out of 10. Like, in my opinion, I would have given him, <laughs> in my opinion, I would have given him an 8.5 out of 10. I think he was one of the best players on the pitch, in my opinion. Mm. I think he was our best defender. People are going to say Sanchez, but in my opinion, it was Regulon. I think he, I think, um, for the second goal, great ball into Kane at the back post for Bell's second goal of, of the game, of course, and our, our uh, second goal to go two one up, but yeah, I'm eight point five out of ten, and you said eight out of ten. So yeah, I thought Regan had a superb game. Moving on to the centre back, starting off with Toby Alderweireld. Um, what would you give him? Give him, give him a six. Um, he, again, he was just average, but mm. he just didn't really do anything special, did he? So just... yeah, no, because the thing is, in my opinion, with Toby, like, because 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 the way Palace threatened. They didn't really threaten until the last 15, 20 minutes of the game. Fair enough, they got the goal, but mm. it was literally their only chance in the first we'd, half. We'd already won the game before then, so it's like... Yeah, true, but at the same time, in the first half, like, I think for the goal, fair enough, Benteke's a giant, but I think Toby could have done a bit better with the goal, but at the same time, like, Benteke's six foot four, he's just a giant, like, he's just a great header. But I think... In terms of, like, Paz's threat throughout the whole game, they offered rarely anything until the last... 20 minutes so uh, so my for me like, i would just give toby a seven like i thought his heading was pretty decent uh, from the corners i think he did a i think he headed a couple of corners out and um, that passed delivered towards the end of the first half and the second half as well but yeah toby a seven um uh, moving on to davidson sanchez an interesting one this what would you give sanchez give sanchez i give sanchez an eight Eight out of ten, yeah. In my opinion, once again, he was very, very good today. And the thing, I think, like the thing is, like, if you compare Sanchez to Eric Dyer, like, I'd, I'd hundred percent pick Sanchez. First of all, I think he has more. I think he has less mistakes in him. Mm. I think sometimes Sanchez's heading can be a bit like, Ugh. I mean, for for example, like Newcastle home last season, mm. um, the one that lost, like he got his header all wrong. Like I think he needs to work on his timing a bit more. If you know what I mean, like, um. What's the word? Like his time with headers. He's just gonna um, stay more concentrated, really. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, like, the thing is, like, the thing I love about Damison Sanchez is that he's one of those players who would literally put his whole body on the line. Like, because the thing is, that, like, uh, uh, in my opinion, like, I've heard to see what I express. See you go. Yeah, <laughs> sharp. Because <laughs> the thing is, it's like. I feel I'm starting to see what expressions calling call the Colombian PS5. Like he, mm -hmm. like this man. He puts his whole body on the line. Like he's one of them players who I really like, and I, I think his physicality is really starting to improve as well. And and obviously, okay, fair enough. We didn't get the clean sheet last night, but in my opinion, I think him next to Toby starting to become a very good centre back partnership. But yeah, I give Sanchez an eight as well. I thought I thought along with Regulon, he was our best defender. Um, but yeah, moving on to our right back, Matt Doherty. What'd you give him? I mean. He was one of the people at fault for Palace's goal, like Bodie said in one of the fan cams. Um, 
he, he got an assist, but really, it's not really a great assist, is it? I mean, he literally, <laughs> yeah. he had to, like, I could have got the assist. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, like, I just, though he, because he can see the goal, I know people are going to say this is harsh, I'm moving, going to give him a 4.5. Four point five, like for, <laughs> for me, like because the thing is, I was going to say seven. Do you want to know why? It's because yeah. okay, for our first half, he was quite poor, and as you said, I think for the for the goal, I think he allowed. Um, I think it was Van Anho Van Anho put the ball in from Benteke, was yeah. it? I think it was him. Yeah, I think he just gave him too much time because because you know with Palace, Benteke is a massive guy, and the only way they're going to score is by getting the ball into the box, which is why Palace. Crosses so much, and and suppose like, and the thing is like, if you watch our like, watch long, I was quite right for the set pieces because we all know the size of Gary Cahill, Benteke, etc. Like they, in my opinion, like they, like they're quite big, massive people, and um, I think Doherty for the goal, he didn't, uh, I think he didn't like shut him down quick enough, and hold. I think he just gave him too much space and time to put the ball in the box. But second half, I thought he was superb. He had Zaha in his pocket, in my opinion. In front of Dev, I think there was one time when he got past him. But I thought we had Zaha in his pocket. And defensively, he was very, very good in the second half. Like, I think the second half is one of his best halves since since his arrival here. So, mm-hmm. and, um, and obviously, like, he got an assist. Like, I know it's, a, <laughs> I know it's basically, like, the thing is, like, I know it's basically not an assist with, because, with, mm-hmm. you know, because of how good the goal was. But at the same time, I thought second half defensively, Doherty was very, very, very good. So, mm-hmm. for that reason, I said seven. You said yeah. 4.5, but I said it's seven. But... Um, Anyway, moving on to the midfield. Um, starting also, off before, with before like the midfield, did you see what Gary Cahill did yesterday? Probably be on the screen now, but like in the background of when Bale and Kane <laughs> scored, you, like, we highlighted it on the stream. It's very funny. Very yeah. funny. <laughs> He's a very frustrated man. But anyways, moving on to the midfield. Starting off with a player who I was very surprised to see starting, um, Harry Winks. Um, what would you give Harry Winks last night? I can't really pin how we played in the first half because obviously he played, but we were quite slow in our way and that's why we didn't really play quite well in the first half. But And he was kind of non-existent in the second, so I'll give him a five. I'll give Winks. Yeah, five out of ten. Um, uh, the thing is, I was going to give Win- uh, Winks a six. I mean, for me, the reason I'm giving him a six is because he didn't do anything wrong in my opinion apart from... Mm give away the stupid um, foul towards the end of the first half, which I was really angry with, if you watch the watch along. <laughs> I was really angry with Winks yeah. on that one. But um, yeah, I, I think apart from that, like Winks didn't do anything wrong. But at the same time, again, like he didn't really show any intent to make the four pass. Because so, the thing is with Winks, it's always sideways or backwards, isn't it? And that's what I don't like about him. Mm. Uh, like, other than Hoiberg, who, who wants to make that four pass. But then again, I don't think Winks did anything wrong, realistically. And So six out of ten, you said five out of ten. Uh, moving on to the other CDM, uh, Pierre Emil Hoiberg, uh, the Danish Viking, uh, <laughs> as I like to call him. Um, what would you give him? Uh, I'll give him probably. Give him a six, I think. In that, in the first half, I thought he was quite poor with his passing. It was just mm. as Winks, he was quite slow. Um, in the second half, he improved his performance. I think. Mm. He played well against Fulham, but I just Hoiberg has off games sometimes. It doesn't really get talked about. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he'll have that's like a good one point. One week actually. when he'll play really well, and then two weeks mm. later he'll be off, or he'll just be average. Yeah, that's a good point actually, because because uh, in my opinion, um, there's been a few games when Hoiberg has made a few individual errors that's led to goals. For example, the Everton game. Uh, for Everton's equaliser in the FA Cup, the Calvert Lewin equaliser mm. lost the ball in the middle. He's right literally, the his touch basically made us yeah, lose fr- the game because they scored three goals in seven minutes. And it yeah, gets yeah, to yeah, fair enough. And he also gave away the penalty, which wasn't a penalty, but still gave it away. Mm. Man City gave away a penalty, which I, again I don't think it was. But at the same time, he was the one who lost the ball. So, so to be honest, I can see where you're coming from. Like Hoiberg does have a few off games, but people don't talk about it because he in my opinion, has been behind Kane and Son, our best player this season, in my opinion, Hoiberg. Maybe but, even better than Son, because Son hasn't really been performing the last two months. So. Yeah, true. But at the same time, at the same time, Hoiberg hasn't either. Like, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I think during that period when we were top of the league, he was our best player. Like, I know, I, like, things, I know people are going to talk about K- 
Kane getting all the goals and but but, but the thing is like thing is like, that's what Harry Kane's meant to do. Like he's meant to score the goals. Mm-hmm. Like Hoyberg came from Southampton and people were saying, Oh, he's gonna be a flop and everything. Like and, and people were making jokes saying he's the best Pierre in North London. But that's actually become a reality now in my opinion. Yeah. Um but yeah, but um I think last night Hoyberg um I give him a seven. Yeah, um to to us to us I to us, like, um I think you're not wrong. First half he was quite slow. But then again there was a couple of moments when he wanted to make that full pass, and that's what I liked about him in that first half. Second half, Brian, as always, Hoiberg, like, um, we know what he's like. He always wins the ball back, always gets forward as well, and he always wants to help out with the attack as well. So, you know, 7 out of 10, I think 7 out of 10 kind of resembles like a pretty decent game he had. So, mm. yeah, moving on to the attacking three, starting off with Hume Min Son. Um, obviously got the assist for the fourth goal. I mean, it was like, I could assist Kane also for that. So. Well, no, not really, because because Son still had to get it across, and plus it was a first time mm. ball back across as well on the yeah, volley. True. So, so but anyways, what did you give Son last night? I mean, he's been. I think people are a bit wrong. He's been non-existent the last couple of games. I don't really think that's true um, because I thought he was okay against Villa. I think he was really good against Burnley, but today, except from the assist, he was non-existent again. And I think maybe it's because Son did look really tired. In that game, yeah, um, I think with Son, obviously, obviously, like he got the assist against Fulham, he got the assist for the for the Kane second goal today. Um, in the first half, like first half, like he didn't get into the game, but he was trying, you know, and that's what I like about Son. Literally, in the second half, it's the 85th to 90th minute. Well, it was around that time anyway. The game's done. We're four one up, and I'm seeing Son literally sprinting out the defence, wanting to win the ball back. That, that's what I like about Son. Like yeah, he, may he always not... gives a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he may not always be involved in the game, but he but he always tries, and that's what I like about him. And for that reason, I'm going to give him a seven point five. Like, like obviously, like he got the assist, and like I know he wasn't. Uh, and obviously, like he had that chance in the first half, that header, which I think he should have scored. But obviously, Guys is a big guy, and and he did well to hold on to it. But I give Son a seven point five. I think overall he had a pretty decent game, and he was trying as well, which is what I like to see from him. Uh, so what do you give Son out of ten again? Um, I'll give him a seven, like you. Yeah, seven, yeah. right? Um, right. Moving on to our central attacking midfielder, I think a player that no one's talking about, but in my opinion, was one of our best players, Lucas Mora. Oh, I Lucas. thought he was uh, L for Lucas. I thought he was absolutely brilliant last night. I like because the thing is, people are going to talk about Harry Kane and Gareth Bale because of the link up and. Bell got the assists and Kane got the goals and Gareth Bell got the two goals and etc. But Lucas Moore is a player that no one's going to talk about because oh, cause obviously Kane stole the headlines with like because uh, Kane was involved in all the goals. But I give Lucas a nine. Like, like, I think Lucas was exceptional. Like first of all, okay, for our second half he was fantastic again. But the reason the main reason I'm giving him a nine is because in the first half. As you guys know, like if you watch the game or if you, um, or if you like saw our reactions on the watch on, Lucas Mora was the only player in the first half who had any sort of intent to drive at that Palace defence because uh, because we all in the first half we were very very slow, like um, I mean the tempo was very 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 poor in my opinion, but Lucas was the only player who looked to like drive at the um, drive at the Palace defence because because Palace is defensive shape in that first half was working very very well mm. and remember this is a Palace side who kept two clean sheets against United and Fulham who both have very good attacks in my opinion and and the fact we scored four goals and the first goal uh, the goal in the first half started off with Lucas he won the ball back of Milivojevic so mm. I think that's Lucas was yeah. our Lucas was our shining light if you if you caught that in our first half and the mm. second half um, very funny moment towards the end of the game if you didn't see it uh, Lucas missed the chance right at the end, and he saw the camera, and he held up the L for Lucas right at the end of the game. But um, yeah, I thought um, I'm thinking people going to talk about Harry Kane, but Lucas was, in my opinion, our second best player last night. So nine out of ten. What would you give him? Yeah, I agree. Um, I give him probably an eight point five. Um, mm. I still think he was our second best player. I just think a nine. Mm. I mean, a nine for me you have to get a goal and assist really to get a nine. Okay, fair enough. Okay. It's not, yeah, yeah. So I give him an eight point five. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the Welsh Lewis Figo, also known as Gareth Wales. Um, 
Uh, obviously, another two goals for him last night, taking his Premier League goal tally up to five now, four behind Aubameyang and Lacazette. Could we see him catch up in the Premier League this season? We shall see. But another two goals for Gareth Bale, who I thought, again, was pretty good last night. But in the first half, like, he was in the game, but uh, it was the same as Fulham, in my opinion. Like, uh, like he was in the game. Okay, fair enough, he got the goal. Mm. But let's be real, it was a tap-in. And apart from that, in the first half, like, I don't think he was in the game in terms of our chances. Like, because the thing is, like, he looked to make things happen. Like, if you, um, like he put the ball in the box for Son's header. That was straight at um, Guaita, Son's chance. Like, he was the one who put the ball in the box. Um, but the second half, like, he really, really stepped up. Um, obviously, his second goal, brilliant header after a, after another brilliant header from Harry Kane, actually, who put the ball back across with Bale, who nodded it into the top right-hand corner. Um, but yeah, another two goals for Bell. Um, I mean, two goals. I mean, you can't really take that away from him. Like he, I thought last night was pretty good once again. Um, but I give him an eight point five, Gareth Bell. Would you give Bell? Yeah, mm, I give Bell probably an eight, nine. A nine. Uh, from what I said against Moore, he got two goals. So okay, I don't agree though. That I've heard some people say he was better than Kane. I don't think that's true. Really, no. because I mean, Bodie voted um, Bell was our man of the match, and I can see why uh, because of his work rate. But, 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 anyways, moving on to Harry Kane. I mean, I pretty much run out of words to describe this guy, man. Like, we man, all know how we good he is. Just get this over quickly. The man deserves a 10. That's all we need to say. 10 out of 10. I mean, two goals and two assists, one of them being a goal of the month contender. If you go and watch our uh, live reaction for the third goal on our watch long. What was annoying is that Josh was editing the scoreline when Kane scored yeah. the goal, which was really annoying so because it's like the goal our reaction was just after each other. Yeah, yeah because after. because the second and third goal was literally like a minute apart, so Josh had to obviously edit the scoreline and stuff and uh, during the watch long, yeah. and that was and and that was what was frustrating. But like both his goals he took well. I mean both his assists as well. Two goals and two assists. Man, the match like you can't not say a ten. Can you not? Oh, no, you can't. I think. He was different class yesterday, and I think that's his first good game in a while, really, since he's got injured. Mm. Like, he's been all right, but <laughs> the, I guess the only two games where he was at least good were Burnley and a kind of West Brom, but he missed cities in those games, but yesterday he was just different class. Now, can you see where you're coming from? I, I think the Fulham game, he was quite wasteful. I think yeah. Fulham, he was, Fulham, he was, I think Fulham, that was one of his poorest games this season. Like, he, like, he missed two. Really golden chances, chances. Yeah. in the first half that header literally either side of Ariola and it's a goal mm. and well, okay, fair the chance in the second half it's just a good save but yeah. I thought Kane was pretty woeful against Fulham but today he really really stepped up but, like that goal the way he hits that first time and curls it into the far corner it's just ridiculous 16 goals in 13 assists in, in 27 games now I remember he's been injured for contributions I think in Europe this season or he's got the most assists well for the Premier League definitely yeah he's um, got the most assists and I think Europe's top five leagues because I think before he was tied with Meta and Kevin De Bruyne but obviously he got two assists so he's got more now. yeah I think he's I think he's three goal contributions ahead of Bruno Fernandes now in the Premier League two or three yeah. um, and, 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 and also I must remember Kane's been injured for a few games as well but in my opinion he's been player of the season in the Premier League like people are going to say Fernandes because he's a midfielder but the fact Kane gets 13 assists as a striker... And he shows up in the big games as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Well, to be fair, Bruno did show up against Man City yesterday. Like, he did have the most ball recoveries and everything. But come on, Kane always turns up in the big games. So, 10 out of 10 performance. Mm. And well, lastly, lastly, this is a different one. Jose Mourinho. <laughs> what would you Whoa. give him out of 10? Um, well, I can't... Well, we don't know what obviously happened at half-time, but we can... From what I predict, he probably went in the changing room and gave the players. The, he probably gave the players a good like shout or something to them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because in my opinion, in my opinion, like I can see in terms of the lineup. Um, looking back at the game, I think it's a good lineup because <laughs> because the thing is that when the lineup came out, I was pretty pissed off that he started Winks to the Sissoko. But looking back at the game. Winks is more suitable for the game in terms of his passing accuracy yeah. and everything because it kind of opens up the Palace mm. shape, shall we say, if you know what I mean. Because because we all know because we all know Winks' passing is very accurate. Uh, for example, that Ludo Goretz goal, the one he scored from the halfway line, which wasn't a pass, but it was, it, it was accurate. Um, and obviously, uh, lately, uh, lately Mourinho Steiner 
rotate the team a bit. And that's why I like c- considering the fact that the games are coming thick and fast and the schedule's very, very tight. Um, but yeah, um, looking back here, I thought the lineup was good. Obviously, giving Bale a third consecutive start. Lucas is back in there. Sanchez and Old Olderwald as I think we should keep that as a centre back pairing. Play Eric Dyer and your Tanganga against the uh, uh, what, what were they called Zagreb on Thursday. Zagreb are not an easy team, but we'll get on to that later. I don't think yeah. we'll rest many players, but we'll yeah. get on to that in the preview. Yeah, but anyways, um, but anyways, um, I thought I thought half time it must have been his team talk because mm-hmm. the second half the players came out Different and we looked, like, we looked like yeah, and, like someone said we looked like the team that were top of the league. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, oh. that's what I, that's, I said that. Yeah, in, in the in the fan cam with Bodhi, I said second half we came out and we looked like, and and we literally looked like the team that was top of the league only a couple of months ago. And because um, the first half, first half it was like watching us. Um, it, first half it was like watching us at Wembley when we first moved there. It was flat. It was slow, and and the team just sat back and everything. But the second half we looked like we looked like a we, we literally looked like an like a completely different side and yeah and brilliant second half performance it must have been Marino's team talk because yeah all right anyways people that has been the player ratings for Tottenham 4 Crystal Palace 1 the next um video should hopefully be the the review for Dynamo Zagreb which will come out on Wednesday which I'll be here for obviously I won't be on the watch long for either leg actually because I'm at school obviously um but I will be on the watch longs for Arsenal, Aston Villa, Newcastle etc Anyway, thanks for joining me once again. Hope you guys enjoy the player ratings. We'll all do more of these type of videos and we'll see you next time.